Picture a place untouched by the hands of time, where the echoes of the ancient past are the living present. A place hidden away from modern civilization, where people live exactly as our ancestors did thousands of years ago. This isn't the setting of a science fiction novel or a far-off alien world. It's right here, on Earth, in a tiny speck of land in the Indian Ocean, North Sentinel Island. A land shrouded in mystery, protected by its isolation, and inhabited by perhaps the most isolated tribe on Earth, the Sentinelese. Let's delve into this intriguing enclave of human history. Imagine an island so remote, so isolated, that we know almost nothing about it. This isn't the premise of a new season of Lost, but rather it's our reality. That's the story of North Sentinel Island, located in the Bay of Bengal, part of the archipelago of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. North Sentinel Island is unlike any other place on Earth. Its inhabitants, the Sentinelese, are considered to be the last pre-Neolithic tribe in the world. That's right, while you and I are here using our latest devices to communicate across continents, there's a group of people who live much like our ancestors did thousands of years ago. They rely on hunting, gathering and fishing for their sustenance. Interestingly, the island isn't that far from modern civilization. It's just over 50 kilometers from Port Blair, the capital of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Yet, despite this relative proximity, the Sentinelese have remained astonishingly isolated, their language, customs and way of life remaining a mystery to us. Why? You ask? Well, the Sentinelese have made it abundantly clear that they want nothing to do with the outside world. They are known to respond with hostility to any attempt at contact, throwing spears and arrows at low-flying aircraft and boats that venture too close to the island. In the age of Google Maps and instant communication, it's somewhat startling to acknowledge that there are still places on our planet that remain uncharted and largely unknown, reminding us of the vastness and variety of human experience Diving deeper, let's take a closer look at the residents of this remote island, the Sentinelese. They represent a living testament of human survival, resilience and isolation. The Sentinelese are thought to have lived on North Sentinel Island for up to 60,000 years, undisturbed and disconnected from the evolution of civilization as we know it. That's right, they've been around for longer than we've had written language farming, or even the wheel. The Sentinelese live in small temporary huts made from locally available materials, palms, grass and bamboo. For food, they depend on hunting, fishing and gathering plant-based food. They use simple tools like bows and arrows to capture their prey. There's something incredibly humbling about the Sentinelese. Living in an age where we're surrounded by technology and comforts, the Sentinelese offer a stark contrast. They've survived for tens of thousands of years with what the land provides, their tools haven't changed for millennia, and their way of life remains rooted in age-old traditions. Their language is a mystery too for now. Even neighboring tribes from other islands in the Andaman and Nicobar archipelago can't understand it. Their dialect has evolved in isolation for so many thousands of years that it has become completely unique. You might be tempted to think of the Sentinelese as primitive or backward, because they lack the technology we're accustomed to. But let's flip the narrative here, perhaps in their sustainable way of life, in their balance with their environment and in their resistance to outside influence, they could be seen as incredibly advanced, practicing a form of wisdom that the rest of us are only beginning to appreciate. We've established the remoteness and the distinct culture of the Sentinelese, but why is this island smaller than the city of San Francisco spoken about with such apprehension and caution? Why is North Sentinel Island considered one of the most dangerous places on Earth? There's a simple yet profound reason for this. The Sentinelese are hostile towards outsiders, and for centuries, they've defended their island fiercely. Now this isn't out of any inherent aggression or malice, but a natural response to protect their domain and their way of life from the unknown, that unknown being us. Take for instance their encounter with the British in the late 19th century. An expedition led by Maurice Vidal Portman, a British naval officer, kidnapped several Sentinelese with the aim to civilize them. The kidnapped members soon fell ill, and most of them died due to exposure to foreign diseases against which they had no immunity. Those who survived were quickly returned to the island. Similar incidents have occurred throughout history with explorers, anthropologists, and even lost fishermen receiving a hostile reception. In 2006, two fishermen who strayed too close to the island were killed. These encounters, while tragic, 
offer valuable insight into the island's fearsome reputation. It's less about the hostility of the Sentinelese and more about their rightful defense against potential threats. After all, from their perspective, these outsiders have brought nothing but harm and disease. Perhaps the danger of North Sentinel Island is less about the people who live there and more about our own inability to respect their desire for isolation and self-preservation. But let's not forget, we're dealing with a society that has had virtually no contact with the outside world. The rules are different and so are the stakes. So, we've seen how the Sentinelese have maintained their distance from the rest of the world. But what about the world's responsibility to them? With the notoriety that comes with the island's unique isolation, how is North Sentinel Island, and more importantly, its people, being protected? The Indian government, under whose jurisdiction the island falls, has made several attempts to establish peaceful contact with the Sentinelese. In the 1980s and 1990s, there were contact expeditions where gifts like coconuts, bananas and iron implements were left on the shores. These attempts were met with mixed reactions, ranging from curiosity to outright hostility. But over time, the Indian government has taken a hands-off approach. They've established a three-mile exclusion zone around the island, making it illegal to approach without express permission. They've realized that each contact, no matter how well-intentioned, risks introducing diseases that could potentially wipe out the Sentinelese, who have no immunity to common ailments like the flu or measles. This protective stance was highlighted in 2018 when an American missionary named John Allen Chow was killed by the Sentinelese after illegally visiting the island in an attempt to convert them to Christianity. Despite international outcry and demands for his body to be retrieved, the Indian authorities refused to disturb the Sentinelese, arguing that any such attempt would be both dangerous and disrespectful. It's a precarious balance, isn't it? The Sentinelese are arguably the most isolated people in the world, with their wishes for isolation respected, but this isolation also makes them vulnerable. With increasing impacts of climate change and sea level rise, the future of North Sentinel Island and its inhabitants hangs in the balance. The question then arises, how do we protect those who do not want or perhaps do not understand the need for our protection? The case of North Sentinel Island raises some interesting and complex moral questions, doesn't it? The Sentinelese are a living, breathing testament to an ancient way of life, fascinating and mysterious in their seclusion. But as we've seen, this seclusion isn't without its perils. How do we approach these perils? Should we leave them alone, as they clearly wish, respecting their autonomy but leaving them vulnerable to natural disasters and climate change? Or do we intervene, risking their health and way of life in the process? There's no easy answer. In fact, these questions touch on wider debates about colonialism and its legacy. The history of the world is filled with instances where contact has resulted in devastation for indigenous peoples. The Sentinelese have so far avoided this fate, but at the cost of complete isolation. These questions also highlight the tension between scientific curiosity and ethical responsibility. As a society, we're naturally curious. We want to know more about the Sentinelese and their way of life. But is it right to satisfy our curiosity at the expense of their wishes? Is there a way to learn without disrupting? Finally, the case of North Sentinel Island forces us to confront the value we place on different ways of life. Our modern, technology-driven society tends to prioritize progress and development. But the Sentinelese are a stark reminder that there are other ways to live, and that these ways too have value. So, perhaps the most important moral question is are we willing to accept, respect and protect a way of life that is so different from our own? Now, the Sentinelese aren't the only uncontacted tribe in the world. According to Survival International, there are more than 100 uncontacted tribes across the globe, with the majority in Brazil and Peru. These tribes, much like the Sentinelese, choose to reject contact with the outside world often due to a history of violent encounters or the devastating impact of diseases brought by outsiders. But being uncontacted in the 21st century comes with its own set of challenges. As we continue to consume resources and land, these tribes face threats to their survival, deforestation, illegal mining and oil exploration, to name a few. The global community faces a dilemma. Do we respect their choice to remain isolated, potentially allowing their unique cultures to disappear? 
or do we intervene, potentially disrupting their way of life? The story of North Sentinel Island and the Sentinelese people raises these questions. They're a stark reminder that, even in our interconnected world, pockets of isolation remain defying our understanding of what it means to be a global citizen in the 21st century. And there you have it, a journey through time and across the waves to a corner of our planet where time, in a sense, has stood still. The Sentinelese in North Sentinel Island, a mirror to our past and a testament to human adaptability. It's a stark reminder that even in this era of technological advancements and global connectivity, there are parts of the world that remain untamed and untouched. So, while we wonder about life on other planets, it's worth remembering that there are still some mysteries to be solved right here on Earth. And as always, thanks for watching.